amputation with non healing ulcer at the top of the stump from 2 years this is how it looked like and this is what the x ray looked like why if you have a closer look this is how the axis of the talus into the ankle mortis looks like this is tibia that's talus so equinus deformity with the pressure or apex of the stump tendo achilles release was not done at index surgery and so what you need would be lengthening of the tendo achilles transfer of tibialis anterior balancing with the peroneus longus transfer case 2 amputation at first second and fourth mtp level with painful cons of one year duration like this amputation at first mtp level with non healing ulcer of one year duration in a diabetic patient why let's have a closer look it was the pressure by the head of first metatarsal and sesamoids plantar pressure by the ball of first metatarsal and sesamoids in a neuropathic foot which was not healing and so when you do the amputation you need to cut metatarsal head from dorsal distal to plantar proximal direction not to have pressure on the plantar aspect case 3 pain and inability to walk using processes somebody did this in pakistan that the chopart amputation is not able to walk around no orthotics are fitting no process and look at his x ray why because if you see the axis talus is quite plantar flex equinus deformity at chopart amputation there was no tendons which were transferred tight tear requiring tear release release of tight posterior capsules of ankle and subtalar joint and you need to make a sling of tibialis anterior and peroneae to counter tibialis tendo achilles so friends that poses question for which my talk is are foot and ankle amputations different amputation should be viewed as a reconstructive procedure and not as a failure of the treatment and foot and ankle amputations are absolutely different than what we have been taught what we have been doing let me talk about the broad principles try to salvage as much of the functioning foot as possible because partial foot amputations give greater mobility superior function low energy consumption better weight bearing surface and better cosmosis and do allow use of a normal shoe try and preserve plantar skin use full thickness flaps and whenever you are using to tunicae let it be judicious use of tunicae like in the last case avoid split thickness skin grafting over the weight bearing area and then post amputation you should be asking your patient to use orthotics to get the best outcome let me go ahead and discuss individual amputations toe amputations long plantar and short dorsal flaps with a racket shaped incision for toe amputations or mtp disarticulation amputation if it is done at the base of the proximal phalanx it is always preferred than the amputation at mtp the amput amputation at the mpt joint level disarticulation so if you retain a centimeter of the proximal phalanx when you are doing toe amputation it would allow for the insertion of long flexor and plantar fascia second toe amputation would require placement of a spacer to prevent development of the bunion because there is a space a bunion would develop instead of amputation of two or more toes we need to prefer amputation at tarso metatarsal joint that's a better solution sometimes in a bad helix valgus case amputation of the second toe could be a treatment for helix valgus like this talking about the great toe amputation if you are doing great toe amputation at the level of proximal phalanx which is most preferred preserve sesamoids but if you are doing 
Uh, yeah, as I said, one cm of retained, one centimeter of retained proximal phalanx in hallux would allow place for insertion of flexor hallucis brevis, plantar fascia, and sysmoids. And if you are doing grade two amputation at the level of joint, then sacrifice sysmoids. Otherwise, they are going to give rise to pressure, cons, and callosity. Whenever you are doing amputation at the MTP joint level, cut the metatarsal head, dorsal distal to plantar proximal. That is how it should be. Coming to the ray amputations, try and preserve intact longitudinal ray of foot in a traumatic partial forefoot amputation. Don't go ahead and go above at the midfoot level or chopart level. Ray resections are more durable and functional than transmetatarsal amputation. But this is important. No more than two rays should be resected to retain stability of the forefoot. TMT disarticulation is preferred over removal of more than two rays. And this is most important. You always try to preserve first ray. And if at all you are amputing first ray, keep at least a centimeter and a half of the base of the first metatarsal, which serves for the purpose of attachment of the ligaments. Hammer second toe deformity is expected after amputation of first toe. Fourth and fifth ray amputations are more predictable for good results. Do it. This is most important. Base of the first and second metatarsal should be preferably preserved to avoid disabling Les Frank complex problem. So these are the areas which give insertion to the Les Frank ligaments. You should try and preserve that. Base of second metatarsal. Base of fifth metatarsal. Whenever you are doing amputation, is dissected subperiosteally, and you try to preserve the insertion of peroneus brevis. Metatarsal, whenever you are doing transmetatarsal amputation, a cascade must be maintained, like this. So this is the maintenance of metatarsal cascade. That's what you want. You want this parabola to be maintained whenever you are doing amputation. So what you do? Second metatarsal is cut few millimeters short than the first. Third is cut three millimeters shorter than second. Fourth is cut three millimeters shorter than the third. And fifth is cut five millimeters shorter than the fourth. Transmetatarsal amputations and TMT disarticulations always require lengthening of tendo Achilles. Otherwise, patient would have a contracture in the plantar flexion deformity. Going to the midfoot amputation, that's Lisfranc Frank and Chopart. Two to three centimeter of open tendo Achilles lengthening is a must to prevent equinus contraction. Long flexors are pulled distally and transected so that you don't want your infection to traverse up through the sheath of the tendon. Dorsiflexors are to be transferred dorsally to prevent equinovarus deformity whenever you are doing this. So Lisfranc amp amputation, transfer your tibialis anterior to the cuneiform if it is available. For chopart amputation, transfer tibialis anterior to the neck of the talus. So it forms a sling. Many times I like to add subtalar and ankle fusion. It gives a better prosthetic fit. Like this. A stump should be placed in dorsiflexion for six weeks or a trans ankle stainman pin should be used for chopart or lisprank amputation. Like, like this. Transfer of tibialis anterior through the neck of the talus and transfer of peroneus longus through the cuboid should be done whenever you are doing chopart amputation. Look at this case. That's the marking of the flap, long plantar flap. I've dissected the neck of the talus. These are the two, two, two tendons. And then this tendon would pass through the head and neck of the talus and a long stainman pin. This patient also had corrective supra malleolar osteotomy, so transfer of tibialis anterior, transfer of peroneus longus, and ST pin to support the transfer. This is what you need for Chopart's amputation. The last part is hind foot amputations. You have various hind foot amputations, but the most important one is pirogoff, where calcaneus is rotated to fuse with the tibia, and you put in a screws. Boyd is where you do talectomy and tibio calcaneus fusion, and symes where you rotate heel fat pad and do calcanectomy. Pirogov, this is how you put in two screws and this silver of the calcaneus you are trying to attach to the 
tibia. For science amputation, viable posterior flap and a viable heel fat pad are mandatory. So if you take it and when you find that, oh, no, heel fat pad is not good, you need to go to below knee amputation. And for science amputation, secure tendo achilles to the posterior part of the tibia with the drill hole and secure heel fat pad to the entry tibia with the drill hole. This is very important. This is how it has to be done. So friends, that's how amputations in foot and ankle, they differ from amputations elsewhere. That's all. Thank you so very much.